In half an hour here on Anglia, an omnibus edition of Coronation Street. First, Dickie Davis quizzes the contestants, hoping that they're sportsmasters. <laughs> Another first round tie of Sportsmasters. Three more uh, contestants uh, determined to put their sporting knowledge to a thorough test and equally determined to make it into the quarterfinals. That is the initial goal, and with that goes a prize of £50 worth of sporting goods. The prizes increase in value as the competition hots up, but I'll tell you about that a little later on. Let us meet our three protagonists, starting with Luca. My name is Luca Gagrika. I come from Corby in Northamptonshire. I'm a civil servant, and I'm Yugoslavian on my father's side and English on my mother's. My ambition is to walk out on the centre court at Wimbledon and play one game on that hallowed surface. Well, I say, Yugoslavia have certainly turned out some fine tennis players, haven't they, Luca? They certainly have over the years, Dickie, and currently I suppose the number one idol in Yugoslavia is that well-known gentleman, Slobodan Zivojinovic. Yes, <coughs> I'm sure. Let's meet Edmund. Hello. I'm Edmund Nichols from Whitehaven in Cumbria. I work as a production planner in a local factory we was talking to show all my mates in Whitehaven and their high duties who thought they wouldn't, get, wouldn't even get on the show. You're here and you've won your bet. Well done, Simon. Edmund. Now let's meet Simon. Hello, my name is Simon Button. I'm from Colchester in Essex. I'm a second year undergraduate student at the University of Kent at Canterbury studying English and history. Do you support Colchester United? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, brilliant team. Very consistent. Consistently consistent. average? Consistently average. Yes, yeah. that's right. Well, there we are. There are three challenges, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go then. First round is all about action, moving pictures, and it's ice skating first, and the brilliant Russian pair Bestamianova and Bukin. Very dramatic. Now the first question to you, Luca. Like the Russian pair in the clip, which American man won four successful, uh, successive figure skating world titles in the 80s? Scott Hamilton. Two points. Your question, Edmund. Can you name the Russian girl who won ten world pairs titles with Alexei Ulanov and Alexander Zaitsev, respectively? Rodnina. Rodnina's correct. Two points. And your question, Simon. Can you name either of the Russians, the husband or the wife, who won six ice dance titles in the 1970s? Protopopov. Nah, no, they were a little earlier. Pakamova or Gorshkov would have been the right answer. Let's have another bit of action, and it's boxing this time. He's the comeback king, and he's also the biggest money spinner. Oh, what a shot. Broke him up with that punch. The left hook, as I said, was the one that Leonard looked like doing it. Is he going down for the first time, Howard? His legs just buckled on him like a kid in a playpen there. And he's got a good chance of stopping him here, Leonard. Or has he? Will this fellow get over it? What a turn on for Leonard, and he needed it too. Definitely rocking, able to pick his shots. He's gonna stop it or not? Yes, that's it. It's all over in the ninth round. I think he's won $100 billion, and I think he's still got most of it, knowing Sugar Ray Leonard. Right, here we are, your first question then. Uh, Luca, at which weight did Leonard win his first world title? Well to weight. Correct, two points. For you, Edmund, in 1980, he suffered his first defeat, losing his world crown to whom? Berta Duran. Correct, two points. And your question, Simon, 
In 1987, Leonard won the world middleweight crown, outpointing whom? Weaver? No, Marvin Hagler. Marvin, marvellous Marvin Hagler. And the last bit of action in this round, and here it is. Finally, it's athletics and a star who retired this year to pursue a political career. This really is unexpected drama. Cole has got himself back in touch again, remarkably so. But there's no harder way than this. Ovet is in about sixth place. Cole is still third. What effect will that uh, dramatic incident have had? He grits his teeth and goes again. This is the hardest possible way to win. But win he could do here as Horsfield comes up. And Cole is going to win in the most dramatic fashion imaginable. Sepko wins it. Morel second. Horsfield third. Harrison fourth. And a bit of muscle trouble at the end there too. Right, Luca. Uh, which championship was that? Three A's. The three A's. You know which year? Is that part of the... 1988. Ah. I'm going to accept that, actually. I, they asked for the championship. In fact, it was 89, but I'll give you the... the uh... Is that the one where he tripped up? <laughs> yes, that's right. Exactly, that's the one. Yeah. Right, your question then, Edmund. In the 84 Olympics, Coe finished second to whom? Cruz. Cruz is correct. And a question for you, Co. Ovet and Cram Simon won four of the six Olympic medals at 1500 metres in 1980 and 84. Can you name either of the athletes who won the other two? Busta. Sorry? Busta. No, Abascal or Straub would have been the ones we wanted. So at the end of that uh, round, we see that Simon Button there has yet to start, but there's plenty of time and he can actually catch up and overtake, even from now. Uh, he's in uh, third place, but joint leaders at the moment with six points each are Luca Gagrika and Edmund Nichols. <clears throat> well, round two is the general sporting round, as always. Uh, the theme of this one, Scots managers, or Scottish managers, I should say, in the Football League. And the first question goes to you, Edmund. In what year was Kenny Dalglish appointed Liverpool player manager? 1980. I must press you. I want 85. 85 is correct, just in time, two points. Simon, who saved Colchester from being relegated into the Vauxhall Conference in 1989? I saw him, don't know. Jock, manager, Jock Wallace, uh, a Scottish manager, of course, that was the theming. And you, Luca, who was the Scot who guided a third division team to the League Cup semi-final in 1989? Macari. Joe Jordan. Joe Jordan, Bristol City. Right, there's a picture coming up for each of you. Your picture first, Edmund. Uh, cast your eyes onto the monitor, and here it comes. Who is this? Rioch. Bruce Rioch is correct, two points. Here's a picture for you, Simon. Uh, a Scottish <coughs> manager in the Football League. And can you tell me who this is? Willie Johnston? No, it's John Duncan of Ipswich. John Duncan of Ipswich. Now, <clears throat> you recognise this man coming up, Luca, without any kind of trouble at all. Um, but I want to know the two Scottish clubs sides. Uh, he managed two Scottish clubs before his present club. Can you name either of them? Aberdeen. Aberdeen will do for two points. Your question again, Edmund. Which club has Billy Bremler twice managed? Doncaster. Correct. Uh, what was George Graham's first managerial post, Simon? Arsenal. No, that was his second. Millwall was the first one. Which Scott Luca resigned as manager of Hartlepool in November 1989? Jock McTavish. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better than nothing at all, isn't it? Bobby Moncur, and you probably would have uh, remembered that. Yes, I thought you would. At the end of the second round, we see that still in third place, without a score to his credit, but as I said before, that'll change, I'm sure, is Simon Button. In second place now, Luca Gagrika. But the leader with 12 points is Edmund Nichols from Whitehaven. Now, Simon is rubbing his hands because it's uh, the third round, individual sports, their specialised subject, and it's athletics from your point of view, <clears> Simon. <throat> this is the sport you love so much. The category is marathons, 
and in 60 seconds try and answer as many as you possibly can. The first question and the 60 seconds starting now. Which marathon was known as the Mayor Daily Marathon in 1977? Boston. Chicago. Who was the first British men's winner of the London Marathon? Hugh Jones. Correct. Which British woman won the 89 women's section of the London Marathon? Veronique Marrow. Correct. Who won the New York Marathon four times in a row from 76 to 79? Bill Rogers. Correct. In what year was the first London Marathon? 81. Correct. Which Briton set a world's best time for the marathon in 1954? Jim Peters. Correct. Over what distance is the marathon run? 26 miles, 385 yards. Correct. Who is the reigning women's Olympic marathon champion? Rosa Mota. Cor correct. Who holds the fastest time for the men's marathon? Misa Fira. Uh, Din Samo, Ethiopia. Uh, who holds the, best, the British best time for the men's marathon? Steve Jones. Correct. Who was the last man to retain his Olympic marathon title? Chipinski. Correct. Uh, when did Satterbeck win his Olympic marathon title? 1952. Correct. Who won both the first two World Cup men's marathons and you can answer? Go for Misa Fira again. No, it's <laughs> Ahmed Salah. Salah. But your score has gone up to 20 points. A very good effort indeed, Simon. I'm happy to say let's put a smile back on his face again, so now he's underway. Well, Luca, it's your turn now, and I know that you want to walk out onto that uh, centre court, that Cumberland turf there. I think it's still Cumberland turf. Uh, so tennis is your favourite sport, naturally. The category is Martina Navratilova, and your 60 seconds start now. In 83, Martina lost just once in 87 matches. To whom? Kathy Horvath. Correct. With whom did Martina win her first title at Wimbledon? Chris Evert. Correct. Who was Martina's doubles partner in 79 when her partner won the last of her titles? Billie Jean King. Correct. Who did Martina beat 6-love, six 6-3 six in the 83 Wimbledon final? Hannah Manlikova. Andrea Jaeger. With whom did Martina win her only Wimbledon mixed doubles final? Paul McNamee. Correct. Who is the only player to have won more Grand Slam events than Martina? Margaret Court. Correct. Who interrupted Martina's run of US Open singles victories with a win in the 85 final? Manlikova. Correct. Which event did Martina win in 75 with Czechoslovakia and 82 with the United States? Federation Cup. Absolutely right. Her first title was the mixed doubles in the French Open in what year? 74. Correct. And who was a partner during that first win in a major? Even Molina. Correct. Who was Martina's coach between 81 and 83? Rennie Richards. Absolutely right. In 82, Martina lost just three of 93 matches. Chris Lloyd and Pam Schreiber inflicted two of the defeats. Who was the other player who beat her? Billie Jean King. You, you can answer again. I said Billie Jean King. No, I'm afraid clue. it was Sylvia Hanika. Your score, though, has gone up to 28 points. 28 <laughs> points. Well, waiting patiently in the middle has been Edmund Nichols, and now it's your turn, Edmund. Uh, rugby league is your favourite sport, and we're going to question you on rugby league in Hull. And your 60 seconds starting now. Peter Sterling was one of two Australians in Hull's 85 Challenge Cup final John team. Mugulton. John Mugulton. John? Correct. Who were Hull Kingston Rovers playing when George West scored his record 53 points in 1905? Brooklyn. Brooklyn is correct. Name the Hull player who was the second division player of the year in 79 and the first division player of the year three years later. Pass. Steve Norton. Only one man has won the John Player final Man of the Match award in successive years. Paul Larkin. Correct. Who was coach of the Hull side which won the Challenge Cup and John Player Trophy in 82? Arthur Buntin. Correct. Which Hull Kingston Rovers player topped the first division try scoring list in 78-79 was 28? Bartley. Correct. Who was the first Hull or Hull Kingston Rovers player to win the Lance Todd Trophy? Tommy Otis. Absolutely right. Hull were the very last winners of the Floodlit Trophy in 79-80. Who did they beat in the final? Okay, yeah. Absolutely right. Name the Hull amateur side who beat Halifax in the 77 Woods. Cow Woods is correct. Hull have been beaten in the Premiership Trophy final four times. Which team has beaten them in three occasions? Witness. Absolutely right. How many times have Hull and Hull Kingston Rovers met in the final of the John Player Trophy? Twice. Correct. And there we are. Uh, the time is up and your score has gone up to 32 points. Well done, Edmund. Well, uh, let's have a look at the scores all the way across the board. We see that Simon is in third place, but with 20 points now. In second place is Luca Gagrika with 28. And in the lead at the moment with 32 points, Edmund Nichols. <laughs> I told you that the winner of this uh, round tie will actually get uh, 50 pounds worth of uh, sports goods. Well, the winners of the quarterfinals will have a choice of three prizes, either a weight training bench and weights, a weatherproof leisure jacket or pocket binoculars. 
And then if they can win the semi-finals as well, they have a choice of three prizes again. A home exercise bicycle, a zoom lens camera, or a miniature colour television set. That's something to look forward to. We're going to take a break. After that break, I'll tell you, by the way, how you can enter Sportsmasters if you wish to and give you your address. We'll see you in Sportsmasters in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> In 1952, Rocky Marciano stepped into the ring to become the heavyweight champion of the world. Marciano! It was a title he would never lose. For what Rocky lacked in bulk, he more than made up for in power. The Citroen AX GT has the remarkable power-to-weight ratio of 120 bhp per tonne. It can reach 60 miles per hour in 8.8 .8 seconds. What's more, the AX GT can achieve this unleaded performance on unleaded petrol. Citroen AX, built like Rocky. Crazy weather, I'm at the end of my tether. Tell me when can I depend on you? First it's cloudy, then Mr. Sun says howdy, never know just what you're gonna do. <sighs> we can't control the British weather. Thank goodness we can control gas. Controllable economical gas. The heat of the moment. The Correspondent Guide to Weekends Away. Everything from English tea shops to New York nightclubs, skiing to wine tasting. The first of four parts comes with this week's Sunday Correspondent. Hey, Dennis. Where do sardines come from? Sardines? Well, I can't speak for England, but here in Scotland, they usually come out of tins in the opening with that funny wee key. Did you not know that, did you not know that boy? Every week, you can win a World Cup holiday in Italy. Details on Mars and M&M's packs now. Bobby, who was the West Bromer full wing half who played for England against Italy in 1961? Well, you should know that, really. Mind you, wing half. Wing half? He must be a real old-timer kid, mustn't he? Mark? Sure. I'll be about an hour. Nick? Yes? Give me 20 minutes. Finesse conditioner is controlled by time. A few seconds for light conditioning, a few minutes for deep. Sorry, Simon. I'm washing my hair tonight. Finesse conditioner. Sometimes you need a little. Quite fine, Roger. Sometimes you need a lot. Yes, welcome back. Well, as promised, if you would like to challenge to become a Sportsmasters champion, we'd like to hear from you. If you think you've got that kind of sporting knowledge, drop us a line. If you have a photograph as well, enclose it. If you haven't, don't worry, don't let that deter you. But send it to this address, if you will, please. Mike Mansfield Television, 5 Carnaby Street, W1V, 1PG. Mike Mansfield Television, 5 Carnaby Street, W1V, 1PG. On with the game, the fourth round to come, and just before we start that, let me just identify the players and their scores. In third place is Simon Button from Colchester with 20 points. In second place, Luca Gagrika from Corby with 28 points. But the leader at the moment, Edmund Nichols from Whitehaven with 32 points. Eyes down now for the fourth round. It's on the buzzers, and this is the one that will determine who has to leave. Stuka, first of all, what is the regular venue of the Rothmans Grand Prix tournament? Luca? Reading. Correct. Uh, golf, who lost the 1970 British Open at St Andrews after playing off against Jack Nicklaus? Luca? Sneed. Saunders. You lose one, you lose one. Which sport did England's Paul Curran win a gold medal at the 86? Yes, Cycling. Edmund. Cycling is correct. Hockey, who were the first Olympic women's champions in 80? Yes, Simon. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is correct, two points. Golf, which course is the home of the Honourable Company of Edinburgh Golfers? Edmund? You were failed. Yes, correct. Two points. Which trophy was first presented to the Honourable Ivo Bly in 1882? Yes. The Ameri America's Cup? No, it was the Ashes. The Ashes. Boxing. In which American city was Muhammad Ali born? Edmund? Louisville. Louisville is right. The lip. A snooker. Who is the last man to have been world amateur champion and appear in the world professional final? Yes, Luca? Perry Manns. Jimmy White. 
Golf, what nationality is 1989 German Open winner Craig Parry? Yes. Australian. You're absolutely right, sir. Ed Edmund. Rugby Union, for which club did David Duckham play? Yes. Coventry. Is right. Uh, hockey, which football ground staged the 1989 Lada Classic? Yes. Luton. Correct. Two points for you, Luca. Gymnastics, who was the women's combined champion when Olga Corbett won two individual exercises? Tereshkova. Tereshkova is correct and just in time, but <laughs> not in time in a sense. Right, that's the end of the fourth round. Let's look at the scores and we see that Simon Button is in third place with 23 points. In second place is Luca Gagrika with 30. But the leader with 42 points is Edmund Nichols. <laughs> well, you certainly would have been competing if you got some points in those first two rounds. You did so well from then on in. Hard luck, Simon, but thank you very much indeed for joining us. No, Simon you. Button, ladies and gentlemen. So, fighting out the head to head, the fight to the finish is Luca Gagrika from Corby and Edmund Nichols from Whitehaven. The scores are back to zero again. They start all over again, as it were, and three short rounds. First of general sporting knowledge, and we start with horse racing for you, Luca. Which Epsom Derby winner of the 80s was trained by David O'Brien? The creator. Correct. Uh, horse racing also for you, Edmund. Which was the last Epsom Derby winner to be saddled by Vincent O'Brien? Now, I must have an answer. Tinoso. No, it was Golden Fleece, Golden Fleece. A cricket question for you, Luca. What nationality is the Derbyshire fast bowler Ole Mortensen? Danish. Correct, two points. And cricket for you also, Edmund. For which county did James Whittaker score 1,252 county championship rounds in 89? Leicestershire. Correct, two points. Football for you, Luca. The last one in this round. Which was the last British club to win one of the three major European trophies? Everton. Two points. And football for you also, Edmund. Which was the last club before Liverpool to win the league championship three years in succession? Wolves. Arsenal. Arsenal. So at the end of that short round, we see now that Edmund is in second place with two points, but the leader with six points is Luca Gagrika. Two pieces of action to come now, a question on each to each of them. Uh, horse racing first, and a look at one of the great hurdlers in the 80s. And Dawn run in the lead, but here comes the champion, Gay Brief, now in second place, coming down to the second last. Dawn run from Gay Brief with Ran over close up in third. Two out this. A good jump there by the champion in second place. Jumping very well indeed and throwing down the challenge now to Dawn run. Dawn run next to the rails. Gay Brief on the outside of him. And Ran over is back in third place as they come down to the final flight. And here Gay Brief joins Dawn run. Dawn run and Gay Brief uh, from back in third place. Ran over. And it's Dawn run. Dawn run holding on though. From Gay Brief who's trying to put down a challenge again. Dawn run from Gay Brief. Dawn run going on by half a length. Well, there we are. The first question going to you, Edmund, now. There was a full house to see those two horses fight it out. Uh, it was the Christmas Hurdle in 1983. Where was it, where is it run, that race? That course that we saw. No? Yeah. No, it's Kempton. Kempton. And your question, who rode the horse to both its champion hurdle and Gold Cup successes? Luca? Don Joe O'Neill. Two points is correct. Another bit of action, and finally, it's rugby and the kind of form that makes Bath such a major force. Right, well, that was a try, uh, <clears throat> Edmund, by Bath's leading scorer last season. Can you name him? Stuart Barnes. Two points is correct. And Luca, who in 88 became the first London side to win the John Player Cup, ending Bath's run of four successive wins? Harlequins. Two points for you as well. At the end of that second round, then, Edmund has got four points in second place, but the leader with ten, Luca Gagrika. It's all down to the buzzer now, lads. Hands on the buzzers, and here we go. Football. Who was chairman of Fulham for 19 years and died? Tommy yes, Trinder. Luca. Tommy Trinder is correct. Cricket. Who was the last player to score over 1,000 runs before June? Graham yes. Hick. Graham Hick is correct. Rowing, how many bridges do boat race crews pass under? Three. Two. 
You lose a point. Table tennis, the men's world team championship, the Sweden Cup. Yes. <laughs> Sweden. Hungary. <laughs> that was a good try. Um, motor racing, which circuit uh, stage is the San Marino Grand Prix? Italian. It is, but it's not Monza. good enough. It's Imola is the one I wanted. You lose a point. Horse racing, which was the last horse to win the Cheltenham Gold Cup in successive years? Cheltenham Gold Cup in successive years. I said that. <laughs> now, I must have an answer. We would lad. No, it was Les Gargo. You lose a point. Football. With which club did John Aldridge begin his football league career? Yes. Newport. Two points. Uh, judo. Who was the first British woman in 1980 to win a... Yes. Bridge. Jane Bridge is correct. American football. Who was Washington's quarterback in the 88 Super Bowl? Joe Montana. Doug Williams. In which sport did Britain Richard uh, Priestman win a bronze medal at the Seoul Olympics? Yes. Fencing. Archery. Who batted for over 13 hours in a test match against Australia? Great batch. Sir Len Hutton. <laughs> Table tennis. Which country has won the women's team championship, the Pro Beyond Cup? China. China is correct. Football. From which club did Graham Sooners join Liverpool in 78? Luca? Middlesbrough. Correct. Two points. Cricket. Which county plays at Grace Road? Leicestershire. Luca? Absolutely right. Motor racing. On which circuit did Jim Clark die? Yes. Nuremberg. Uh, Hockenheim. Hockenheim. And there's the bell. And uh, a really a, a very... Uh, a very courageous bid there, pressing as much as you could, I know, Edmund, to make it, but you've got five points, sadly, in second place, and the winner is Luca Gagrica with 15 points. <laughs> yes. A sporting handshake from the loser to the winner. Uh, you win 50 pounds with the sports goods. We'll find out what that is later on, and you're now into the quarterfinals, and we look forward to seeing you again there. Mm -hmm. We also look forward to seeing you at home for our next programme, another first round tie on Sportsmasters. That'll be at next Saturday, the same time, same place. See you then. From all of us, it's goodbye. <laughs>